Hey everybody, how is it going? It's now Saturday afternoon. I'm no longer in the sun like I was yesterday. And as promised, here's part two of my question and answer. I'm armed with the questions. Ivan Lala with the first question. How would you deal with rejection, oppression and constant negative criticism? In the three years I've been racing in competition, not once was I congratulated or have I gotten a pat on the shoulder apart from from my parents. He's always fourth to eighth in the under 23 category. Moving on, there are a few big people I used to look up to, but any time I tried talking to them to get some advice, he was bombarded by, bombarded by complaints that he wasn't good enough, nor that he ever would be, even when asking tech questions. He tries to learn by watching, just ends up leaving my bike until it's done. Sorry for the long-winded question, but that's basically it. Don't be sorry for the question. No question is not worth asking. Um, I think it's really important to focus on yourself and your goals. It's really good that you have your parents' support. Obviously, that's one of the most important things. Road cycling can at times be a little bit clicky. Um, I've got no explanation for that. Maybe it's just the sort of character that it often seems to attract. So focus on setting your goals. When you achieve them, give yourself a big pat on the back. That's when you should reward yourself and feel fulfillment from that. I don't think you can look too much to the external people and expect anything from them. It's, It's a real shame, obviously, that where you are at the moment, where you're riding, where you're racing, isn't providing you that sort of extra support and that extra, that extra boost to your, your confidence, as it were. There are so many good resources out there where you can ask for support and for help. For example, you can even, you know, there are many people that do YouTube channels now. If you can write to any one of them, I'd be really surprised if every now and again your name won't get picked up and your question won't be answered. Uh, You could try contacting a coach to get some more formal advice. A coach is also really good at building you up when you need a bit of support and also keeping you, giving you a reality check and keeping you on the ground when you need that as well. On the whole, try and just enjoy your riding for yourself. Ultimately, if it's a bit of a struggle because cycling is a tough sport you know even if you won 99 races out of 100 you still be annoyed you didn't win that 100th race it's just one of those sports where you kind of have to accept that it's not always going to go your way and that does make it tough but you do learn to accept that over the years and you do learn to become content with what you're doing just going through the process going through the motions and using that as sort of a, a marker of how well you're doing rather than anything else it really will be okay you will learn to understand when you've done well when you haven't done well And as you get older, it definitely gets easier not to worry about the external factors as well and external people and how that affects you or how it doesn't affect you. Smile. (laughs) That's staying in. No, it's not. (laughs) Why not? I don't want to be in your videos. (laughs) Go away. Question on food from Andy Painting. Hi, Chris. How do you eat healthily to a budget? I try, but I've got such bad willpower to resist crisps, snacks, etc. This is downfall. How do you resist bad foods and control the urges? The best way is never buy the food and that it's never in the house. You can never eat it. It's easy to be strong when you go to the supermarket after a meal. It's much more difficult to be strong when you're tired and you're a little bit peckish and you're feeling, I don't know, maybe a little bit down or you feel like you want to treat yourself for some reason. But if you haven't already got those foods in the house, it's going to make it a lot harder to actually eat them because it means you'll have to go out and get them yourself. For me, that is definitely the best way. Other ways would be to focus on the goal, focus on the reason why I was trying to rule those foods out out of my diet. And then also don't completely eliminate those foods. Like you have to have balance in whatever it is that you're doing. So maybe once or twice a week, you can say, oh, today's my snack day. I always used to do something called Cake Mondays when I was younger. So generally you do your hardest two rides of the week on a Saturday and a Sunday, or you would have raced. Then on a Monday, you can just enjoy something extra that you wouldn't normally do. And yeah, as I got older, I definitely got a little bit less strict with that. And maybe Cake Mondays became Cake Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays and things like that. But it's all about finding the balance and the rhythm that works for you. Whatever you're doing, it has to be sustainable. There's no point in eliminating all of the good stuff in your life if it's just becoming a chore. Regarding shopping on a budget, we shop at the Aldi. Uh, Shop at the cheapest supermarket you can find. I think food is pretty much the same. It's all within reason from the same place and to the same standards. Of course, there's going to be some sort of discrepancy. And also the top of the range lines from supermarkets, they're almost identical to the bottom of the range lines. I I really don't see the difference. Just paying for some packaging. Dogs, kids and all sorts. Right, here is a double question. One of them is from Shmi. While training your sprint, should you try to practice and prioritize a more aero position or simply try and see those big numbers and PRs? Or from Tobias Nacken, how do you how do you know you've found your optimal sprint position? When sprinting is of course important to be aero, but also push out as much power as possible. How do you know you've found the perfect combination? So I tie those two questions together because I feel like they're after the same sort of answer. It's really important to train the position you want to sprint in when you're racing because if you can only do 1200 watts but you're mega aero and meaning you can do 67 kilometers an hour for example on a set segment of uh, tarmac 
or you can do 1500 watts but you can only get to 66 kilometers an hour then i'd much prefer to be faster and put out less power it's always nice to hit prs it's always nice to see personal records but actually winning races and going fast is up is what's more important and fine-tuning your sprint position to be mega aero is proven to be faster i did i did visit a wind tunnel last year in my previous job I'm sure you can find that video if you want to look for it and it makes a huge difference i found out that i was something like 250 watts slower than i could have been for the same sort of power and the same sort of you know at the, at the finish of a race and that's that's massive um you're never going to get to the end of a race with the same amount of power in your legs as when you're fresh so that's why it's really important to work on sprinting in the position you're going to use in the races and trying to be as aero as possible i really like this next question nerdfighter asks what do i think is the simplest change or upgrade most cyclists could make to improve their riding speed comfort endurance etc well i honestly think it's just being really comfortable on your bike so a lot of the time sorry dogs are messing around here a lot of the time you'll see riders that are a little bit too rigid and even at a high level they're just not that comfortable in a bunch you'll even see pros that are either off the front in the breakaway or they're sat off the back of the bunch and it's generally because they just don't feel that safe in a big bunch and this goes for people of all levels even if you're riding your bike by yourself if you're more comfortable with your handling with your technical ability you're going to enjoy riding your bike that much more you'll enjoy riding downhill more you'll feel safer you'll be more relaxed and i think that is probably well, without a doubt, in my mind, the single biggest thing that everyone can work on, it will make you it will make you smoother and faster than buying a new set of wheels. To get aero, all you need to do is just tuck your head between your shoulders and get, get your head down low. And if you can't hear the wind by your ears as much, it's on the whole a good indicator that you're going to be that little bit faster. And that's completely for free, just tucking your head and your shoulders in. And then if you're really comfortable and confident in the corners, in the descents, carrying a little bit of speed into the bottom of some of the climbs, it'll save you energy, you'll be able to ride further, you'll be able to ride faster, and cycling will just be that much more fun. Just really quickly, if you do like the St. Perrin t-shirts, this is a size medium. On the other video, I had a size small. They are £20, they are free shipping, they are in a shop right now, and all of the profits do directly go towards funding the team, and that's quite important for our team, is to become self-sufficient as much as we possibly can. So please, please, please buy one of our t-shirts. Also, just really quickly, we are so overwhelmed with all your comments. It's amazing to have all these comments underneath the videos. All of the likes, all of the shares, all of the subscribes. It really means a huge amount to me, myself personally, also to everyone at the team as well. It's massive support to have. We've tried our absolute best to stay on top of replying to all of the comments, but you'll see why in a couple of weeks time. We've got so much going on in our lives at the moment. It just hasn't been possible at the moment. And that's Micah, my wife and myself. But thank you, please do keep writing them. We read every single one of them. Even if we don't get around to replying them to them all, we will at some point include as many of the questions as we can into a Q&A, even if it's just bundled, you know, the, the sort of similar questions together like I have been. I just think it's the best way to try and get across some of the knowledge and experience that I've built up over the last 24 years. And I think it's really cool. It's, this is one of my favourite formats and this is something that I did miss actually at GCN is when the Ask GC Anything disappeared. So I think it's really cool to now be able to do it in this way. Which leads me nicely on to the next question. It's probably the most frequently asked question. Have I left GCN? Yeah, I left six months ago now at the start of this year. Why did I leave? Uh, the main reason is I wanted to return to racing. There are many other reasons that contributed, contributed towards it. I really struggled after retiring, not having, not having those set goals, the dedicated race days and the big build up to a large event. And I, I kind of lost track of who I was as a person. I had a massive knock on effect into how I, how I enjoyed my life at work, outside of work. It's, um, it's a very restrictive role at GCN, meaning I wasn't actually allowed to return to racing whilst working there. So it was, in the end, it was quite an easy decision. If I wanted to have the life that I want, uh, that my family want, then the only way to, to continue was to, to leave, basically. Hopefully, that's summed that one up for you. Right, a question from Dean Powell and Anna Watkinson Powell, and I almost wonder if maybe they're from the same household. My wife got a new road bike and on her first two rides has complained about some neck pain and fatigue. Is there anything we can do to the bike or any technique recommendations? And Anna's question is, any, any tips for painful shoulders from riding? I get a twinging the trapezius muscle in my neck and shoulders where a backpack strap would go. During my rides and afterwards, try to stretch my neck and do mobilisation on the bike, but otherwise comfy. I think handlebars and everything are set up correctly. That's a really difficult one. Um, my initial re re thoughts would be that maybe you're just a little tiny bit rigid on the bike i know that when i've had neck pain and things in the past it's been when the weather's been really really cold so maybe it's you know when you're cold everything tenses up a little bit extra if that's not it i would recommend sitting up every now and again on the bike so for the first couple of weeks at least try and stop once an hour 
rotate your shoulders a little bit and you want to kind of just stretch things out a little bit i know it sounds like you've been doing that already if none of this is working it's the only time i'd probably suggest having a bike fit because they they do work wonders I, a friend of mine in cornwall does bike fits kerno physio and every time i've been there i've always felt that little bit better on my bike afterwards you know i'm by no means an expert just because i've ridden my bike a lot when it comes to bike fitting i wouldn't know where to start but i would class a genuine physio and bike fitter as an absolute genius so depending on where you are in the world it might be possible for you to go and visit one of them i think that's probably the the biggest impact that you're going to find dog's ball if you can't go to a physio or to a bike fitter then maybe the next thing you want to try and consider is just moving around a little bit on the bike so moving from the hoods to the tops to the drops try standing up and sitting down in the saddle and things like that just try and keep your body moving so that the pressure and the weight isn't always in one position for too long if you've noticed on some of the videos where i ride along talking to the camera i move my hands around a lot and it wasn't actually until someone commented on this that i realized that i do it but maybe that's why i'm just that little bit more comfortable is because i'm constantly changing position I'm not sure I've been able to help you a huge amount there, but hopefully either someone will be able to write a comment underneath this video or on the back of this advice, you'll be able to book a meeting with a physio somewhere. I've also noticed it seems to be quite a common occurrence that people ask, how do I make money, salaries and things like that, and products and a whole load of questions basically asking how I put food on the table. And I think that's probably quite a complex answer and one that might be worth going into in a whole separate video on its own in the future. So I'm going to leave that one for now. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up I'm going to bring you an on the bike video very soon and I'm going to update you with a few changes on that. Otherwise, hopefully some of these answers are applicable to you and you found them useful and I will see you all again soon.